In this video, I'm gonna share the first step you need to take to solve any subnetting problem. Hi, my name is Jelana James and I'm an AWS and CCNA certified IT professional. Now, previously I created the four column method subnetting cheat sheet. It was a basically an easy way to uh, a chart that you, you create uh, on your exam using four columns that you can use to answer any subnetting question. If you don't know how to create this chart, please watch this video here. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through step by steps so that you understand how to quickly use a subnetting cheat sheet to solve any subnetting problem. Please subscribe. Okay, so here are the five steps of subnetting anything. Usually when you're presented with the IP address, you're like, okay, I don't know what to do where to start. Well, there are actually five steps you need. If you take them in order and you just move step by step, before you know it, you have figured out uh, the subnetting question. Now it's important that you use the subnetting cheat sheet. It's just four columns. You easily recreate, uh, watch a video to see how to quickly create it. Okay, and the first thing you need to do is find the interesting octet. So I'm gonna walk you through that right now. Okay, so there are actually four ways to find the interesting octet. To find the interesting octet, if you're presented with the IP address as well as the seeder, you need to figure out which one of these, there's only four, which octet to focus your energies on. Now, there are four different ways. One of the ways is just to memorize the default seeder ranges. So if it's nine to 16, you know, you focus on the second one. If it's 17 to 24, you know, you focus on this one. And if it's 25, between, 30, 20, between 25 and 32, you focus on this one. So with this one being 26, this is the octet that you would focus on. So that's one way. Just memorize these cedar ranges. The second way is to just count in blocks of eight or 255 because 255 is eight. This is the way that I use to uh, figure out the, my interesting octets. Okay, so you just write 255. So 255. Okay, so that's eight. So that's not that because we have to get closest to 26 without going over. So you, I'd write 255 and I say, okay, no, ignore that one. That's 16 and 255 here. And that's eight, that's 24. That's as close as we're gonna get. So now I know that I need to spend all my energies focusing on this octet. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is to just, if you're giving the um, subnet, address, subnet and not the seeder, then you just simply Pick the one that doesn't have 255. So that would be this one, because it ends in 192. That's like way easy. And lastly, the other way to figure out the interesting octet is to just memorize the class, the class IDs. I mean, the class addresses. So class address ranges. So class A is from zero to 127, class B is 28 through 191, and class C is 192 to 223. Whatever method works for you. But based on this method, with the, you just look at the first octet. So it's 197. So we know 197 falls within this range. And so given that it falls in this range, we know that class C, this is the interesting octet. So those are the four different ways that you can find figure out the interesting octet. You can memorize the default seeder ranges. You can count in blocks of eight or, you know, 20, uh, 255. You can pick the one that doesn't have 255 when you're just given the subnet, um, or you can just memorize the class ranges, whatever method works best for you. At least now, you know, when you sit down to the exam and your mind go blank, the first step you need to do is find the interesting octet using one of these three methods. The next thing you need to do is identify your subnetting row on your subnetting cheat sheet. So to identify the subnetting row, all you need to do for example, if they give you this IP address with the seeder, with the subnetting cheat sheet, you'll be able to find the subnetting mass, the first, the last, the broadcast, the number of hosts, everything. So here's how you, the second step you need to do is like, let's say they ask you to get the subnetting mask. Now, it would be impossible, not impossible, but really take a long time and a lot of space to create the chart in front of you here. It's just too complex and too hard to create on exam day when you're under stress. So instead of having all of these seeders, you know, slash eight to slash 32 already pre-written, we do something different. You're gonna use your four column method submitting cheat sheet. And all you need to do, it includes every single seeder that you'll need. All you have to do is start on row zero. You start on row zero and you start counting at slash eight, 
slash 16 or slash 24, whatever is closest to your cedar without going over. So for example, we have this slash 26. The closest cedar would be slash 24. So you would go 24, 25, 26. So this row is your subnetting row. It would contain all of the answers you need to solve your problems, like block size, number of hosts, number of subnets, subnet mass, cedar, you can get everything from this one row. Now, if we were to write out all the cedars, then slash 26 would be this one. So it'd be this row. It would be this row. But luckily we don't have to do that because we only have to draw the four columns and we just start counting from zero and we will find the row that we need. So 24, 25, 26. And this row contains everything you need to find all your answers. Okay, good. So the next step in, in the five step subnetting process is to identify your subnetting row. And you do that by starting counting at zero from the closest cedar without going over. Also, if they give you the subnet, oh man, that's so easy. All you have to do is look at this second column here and five your subnet. So if they gave you 255, 255, 255, 192, all right, you just go here and you're like, okay, there's 182. So here is my subnetting row that I will use to solve all the subnetting problems. Ta-da! So we've already identified the interesting octet, which is this one. We've already identified the subnetting row, which is this one. And now we need to find the block size. The block size is pretty important because it helps you to figure out which subnetting block you're, you're solving for. So, so for this IP address with slash 26, the block size is 64. Also, I did want to point out that this chart, the four columns, this one sub, uh, cheat sheet contains all the block sizes for cedar slash eight through slash 34, 32. So just, you only need this one cheat sheet to find the block sizes for all of the cedars. Okay, now let's show everything in action. Here we go. Okay, so step, step three is to find the block size. So if you're given this IP address with this cedar, we've already discussed that this is our subnetting row and this is our block size. So in order to write that, we would go zero and block size of 64 plus 64 would be 128 plus 64 would be one nine two and plus 64 would be 256 and these would be the individual subnets okay although this one wouldn't count because there's nothing past 256 but you need it in order to complete this column so that's how you get the block size and i'll show you what that looks like so the um the ranges would be zero so this is this one, 64, this is this one, 128, which would be this one. These are the network, network, network addresses, see? The next one would be 192. And so this is how you would, you would use the block size in order to figure out which subnet, which subnet, I'm sorry, which area to, and then you can find the first, the last, all of that good stuff. Okay, so now you can see why you need the block size. So to summarize, the third step is to find the block size. And all you gotta do is look at column four for the block size. Okay, so now we're on part four of the five-step subnetting process. You need to identify the next subnet. Once you have all the information, you need to figure out, okay, which one do you turn in? Because now you've identified the blocks of addresses that are available to you and you need to figure out which one is the correct answer for your question. So let me show you how. Okay, so the next step is to identify the next subnet. So we've established that this is the interesting octet and our block size is 64. So if we were gonna do the block size, would be zero 
plus 64, 64, plus 64 is 128, plus 64 is 192, plus 64 is 256. All you have to do to identify the next subnet is to first find the group where your interesting octet lives. So it's 19. So 19 is going to be in this column. So the next subnet would be 64 because this one, you know, is going all the way up from zero to 63. So this is the one where your interesting octet would be and this is the row you would use to uh, calculate your answers. This is the next subnet. Okay, see, it's so simple. Once you have all the information, you can quickly determine the um, pieces of information you need to solve your submitting problem. And as we can see here, if we were going to plot it out, we would get the network address would be zero, the host range would be one, you know, et cetera. So 19 would fall within this host range right here. But I'm gonna show you how to calculate this. So that's how you identify the next subnet. You need to identify the block that your existing octet falls under and then note the next block. That's it. Here's a five step subnetting process. We went through every single step and now we're on to the calculate step. It looked like a lot of work, but actually on exam day and with some great, some steady practice, you will be able to quickly subnet any subnetting problem on subnetting day, on exam day. Okay, step one, find the interesting octet. We found out that this was this one using one of four methods. Next is identify the subnetting row. Remember you start from row zero and you count from the nearest seater without going over. So for 26, we go 24, 25, 26. And we've identified this as a subnetting row where we would get all the answers for our subnetting problem. Okay, the next step is to find the block size, which is this 64, so that we can block out our IP address and the appropriate blocks. Next is identify the next subnet so that we can identif quickly identify the broadcast and the last IP address. And then the fifth step is to calculate. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So uh, this is just to quickly summarize what we've already gone through. And now we're going to calculate. So on an exam, if you're given this IP address with this seater and they ask for the first address, last address, broadcast, as well as a number of host, if that's needed, then we will be able to quickly discover, find out. All right, so let's go. The way that I like to start calculating an IP address is to write this template. I write N for network, F for first, L for last, and B for broadcast. Okay, so now I need to put um, block out my IP addresses. So the first one's going to be zero, and you need your block size for this. So the next one's going to be 64, because we have a block size of 64. And the next one is 128. I just always like to do three just in case I can get my rhythm. Now we've said that this one is the one that will contain our current IP address because it's 19. So let's calculate this. So broadcast is one less than the next subnet. So that would be 63. And then network is one more. Then, I'm sorry, first is one more than the network. So if this is zero, this is one. And last is one less than 63, so it'd be 62. And that's it, that's all you need. So now we can, the subnet mask we've already discovered here. So here, and it's 192. So you would write 255.255.255. .255 .255 0.192. Okay, the first available address. Now, because it's, it's um, slash 26 and it's 255, 255, 255 means to just keep the number the same. So we're just going to write that. So 197, 7351. And I'm just going to write them all here. Okay, now that I can just focus on the last octet. Okay, so the first available one is 0.1. The last one is 62. 
And then the broadcast is 63. And you have everything that you probably, they probably would ask for on an exam question. Now the number of hosts, let's see, it's number of hosts is 2y minus 2. And that's a zero. So this would be 2 to the 6 minus 2. So 2 to the 6 would be 64 minus 2 is 62. So 62 hosts per subnet. Now let's do a brand new problem. This is a class B address and see how fast the process goes. Okay, identify the interesting octet. So this would be 255, 255. So it's going to be this one. So it's 0.72. Subnetting row. Okay, it's 20. So we start counting at 16. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's this one. So that's 240, row 240. Block size, okay, so we just go over to column four. And we just see it's 16. And find our subnet. So we're going in blocks of 16. So let's see, let's see if we can do it here. So zero plus 16 is 16, plus 16 is 32 plus 16 is 48, plus 16 is 64, plus 16 is 80. Okay, so it looks like 72 is going to fall inside this block. And we need this to find the, um, the next, uh, the broadcast address. So we need that. So know that it's 80. So the next subnet is 80. All right, let's start calculating. Subnet mask. So the subnet mask is 240. So it's going to be 255, 255, 16, let's see, and 240.0. Got it. Okay, and now because we know 255 means to take the exact number, write it as it is. So we'll just complete this before we fill it in. So two, it's 171, 251 dot something. 171.251. That way, when we come up to write our answer, all we have to do is just fill it in quickly. 171. Point. I hope that you can, guys can read this with this pen. Okay, so let's start calculating. So the first thing we need to write is N, F for first, L for last, and B for broadcast. And we know that our subnet is going to fall in here. So let's just do two so you can get used to it. So we're going to put 48.0 because we have to count for two octets. This one's going to be 64.0 and the next one's going to be 80.0. Okay, so let's start at the bottom. The broadcast is one less than the next one. So 64 is 63.255. And then let's do the bottom of this 80. So it's 79.255. Okay, and for uh, the first is one more than the network. So 48.0 is 48.1. And one more than this is 64.1. Okay, and one less than the broadcast is 63.254. And one less is 79.254. And we said 72 is in this one. So this is where we'll get our answers from. So let me uh, actually, yeah, let me just change the pen so you guys can easily see it. 60, the, the, uh, no, that's, that's not first. <laughs> the first is going to be 64.1. So the first one is 64. Point one, and the last is going to be 79.254, and the broadcast is going to be 79.255, and then the number of hosts, that's going to be a separate video because this is not so easy to find, because as you can see, it's 2y minus 2, and y is the number of zeros. So the number of zeros 
is this is a class B, so it would be like this, plus eight. All of these would be like plus eight. So that's how you would get it, you know, but that's a separate video, so I don't want to confuse you. But essentially, it's two to the 12th. So two to the 12th is four, zero, nine, six. Minus two is four, zero, nine, four. But that's a separate video. But I did want to show you that you can still use your same four column method to calculate the number of hosts in class A and class B and class C addresses using just a simple four column chart. But okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's the five step subnetting process. Identify the interesting octet, identify the subnetting row, find the block size, identify the next sublet and then calculate. Very easy. All right, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe.